Hi everyone! Welcome to our how-to video all about Nearpod and how to use our adapted distance learning lessons within Nearpod. For today's session, we have a couple objectives. One, to go over the engagement features that Nearpod offers and how the SAM Lab lessons use those engagement features. Two, how to edit or add to the SAM Labs lessons within Nearpod. Three, how to assign lessons to your class through Nearpod. Four, all the cool features on collecting and exporting data for formative assessment. And five, and lastly, we will go over your Nearpod account and actually how to use Nearpod itself. So to get us started, you can see that I'm at the Nearpod window. If you've not used Nearpod before, I highly recommend exploring it. There are an, a lot of amazing engagement features that are especially useful with distance learning. So once you have gone to our digital classroom, you can see that we are ad adapting all of our curriculum, kindergarten to eighth grade, and you'll find yourself, if you're a second grade teacher, let's say you clicked on lesson two, and that link will have you force copy our Nearpod lesson into your library. And so I'm gonna walk you through how to actually create the Nearpod account first. So this is just nearpod.com. When you're assigning the lessons to your students, they can join in a lesson by just entering a code um, of letters and numbers. Very easy, very simple for students. But for teachers, you're gonna to want to make sure that you have your Nearpod account set up. Now, there's different options for the Nearpod accounts. There's a free account, there's different membership and paying accounts. I highly recommend going to nearpod.com to check them out. But for today's purposes, I already have an account, so I'm gonna to go to login. And my login is there. And once you log into your Nearpod account, this is your library where all of your lessons will be housed. Now, you can see we have tons of folders. We've been using Nearpod for our eight weeks of STEAM encoding and our summer camp, and also to adapt for distance learning. So I am going to go to our distance learning folder, but as you upload the lessons into your library, you can organize it how you would like. And I'm gonna pretend I'm that second grade teacher and I'm looking at the second grade lesson two, light and shadow lesson. So I made a copy, now it's in my library. Now I want to edit it and make it my own. So I'm gonna walk you through now how to edit the slide deck and specifically how to add some different engagement features if you are interested in doing that. So if you hover over a lesson, you can select edit and the code will be lost. So every time you start a new lesson, the code is lost for any lesson you started previously. It's just a heads up. And when you open up the lesson, it'll show you all of the slide deck for that lesson and all the different um, engaging activities that we have included in our adaptations. Now, there's two types of engagement features within Nearpod. There are content engagement features and activity engagement features. So for example, when you click on a slide and you go add slide, you can either add content or activities. And so that's how we've categorized them. Some examples of content features are videos. And so this is where we've actually been adding in from our YouTube accounts, videos of our screen recordings, um, Nearpod 3D, vet simulations, virtual field trips, BBC videos, um, audio, PDF viewer, and then any direct link to any websites can also be included as a separate slide within Nearpod. So these are some content features. The main ones that we have used in our adaptations are there's always voice recordings, so audio for all the slides, and then some videos, some virtual field trips, Nearpod 3D, and some FET simulations. Now, the activities within Nearpod are a lot of fun for students, makes it engaging. They've really enjoyed them when I've taught with Sam Labs virtually. Um, there are things like the Time to Climb, which is a game similar to Kahoot, um, open-ended questions, matching pairs, quizzes, uh, integrations with Flipgrid, draw its collaboration boards, pulls, fill in the blanks, and memory tests. Now, I'm gonna go through all of these activities and what they look like within this lesson, but I highly recommend that you explore them for yourself. There's a lot of fun things you can do. 
So that's how you could actually add to the slide deck and, and what that may look like. But now I wanted to show you what each slide actually looks like when you're editing. So let's say that I would like to edit this title slide. So I'm going to double click. And if you wanted to listen to our audio, you can do that just by pressing play. Let's say that you wanted to make it your own and record your own audio. All you have to do is delete the audio, go to this audio button, press the audio recorder, and then just record yourself teaching. So that's how the audio recorder actually works. But again, that's all been done for you um, with our team. So now I'm going to save and exit. Anytime you edit or adapt any slides, you're going to want to ensure you save it before you exit. Now, some other features uh, with activities and content. I'll show you what the Nearpod 3D looks like. Let me do a student preview. So from the student's point of view, you can select preview to see what your slides would look like. Um, when the students are working through the lessons, which is pretty cool as you're building the lessons out. So this is what the students are kind of exploring is the 3D Earth with the moon and different sunlight. This is really a great 3D model for exploring shadows and light like this lesson. Okay, now you're going to exit out of student preview. Uh, the draw it feature, really awesome. So I'm going to not double click. So if you wanted to actually edit any of the directions, you're able to do that and then press save. You can also, uh, from the teacher end, upload different templates for students to actually draw on top of. So for this one, they have to draw and label a model of the human eye. So what we've done is we've drawn the circle for them to start to draw within what the human eye would look like. Press save. And now I'll show you from the student's point of view what it would look like as they come to this slide. So I'm gonna press preview. The draw it feature within Nearpod is amazing. Students can obviously draw with the pencil or the highlighter, but then they could also do a text over. So if you wanted them to respond um, or annotate their drawing, they can type in, hi, what's up? They can resize it and then move it on top of the drawing where they would like to. A new feature, they can actually upload a picture. So there are some Sam Labs lessons where we ask the students to do a screenshot of their final code in Sam Space and then actually upload their code and then annotate on top of it to explain what's happening within the code. So there's a lot of neat features within this draw it and uh, I highly recommend that you explore that within our lessons. So I'm gonna exit out of the student preview. So overall, you can see there's a FET simulation, there's the quizzes, an open-ended question. We always have a matching activity for the tier three science vocabulary covered within our lessons. And then from there on out, open-ended questions and a lot of opportunity for collecting data. So now that you have an idea of what the uh, engagement features look like and how to edit a Nearpod lesson, let's go into how to actually collect and export data for formative assessment. So I'm finished editing the lesson for my class. I'm going to press save and exit. And let's say I assigned it to my class. I gave them a week to do the lesson. They worked through it and now I'm interested to see how they did on this lesson two for my second graders. So I'm gonna click on the top right hand, these three dots, and there's some different options. So if you wanted to share it with fellow teachers, your team, you can do that. You can remove it from this folder if you wanted to move it. You can export the slide deck as a PDF or you can take a look at the reports. So let's click reports. And specifically I'm looking at this lesson and you can see how many times I've assigned it. So if you have um, multiple groups of second graders that you're seeing throughout the day or across grade levels, different students, you can assign all of those sessions at the same time, which is a really neat feature. Um, but let's say I'm interested in seeing how this second group of six students actually did. I'm going to click on it and it will bring up what's called the session report. Now the session reports are really neat. It shows you an overall um, general student participation, um, how many answers were skipped, how many questions were answered, um, correct answer ratio, like how the students actually did on the quizzes. And then what you can do is you can go through into each activity and take a look at the student results. So let's say I'm interested in the quizzes to see how the students did on the multiple choice. So 
if I click on the first question, which was what is the difference between a white light and a red light, um, students can, you can actually see what answer they selected. And then it'll give you a nice pie chart to show you overall how the students did on that question. The open-ended question looks a little different. So what is an example of how the eye uses light to see objects? What you'll see is that each student who responds and then what they actually typed out. So you can see that Emily and Fred actually didn't type out any answer to this open-ended question, but Kelly typed test and Ziad typed in this scribble. So um, you can kind of get their open-ended response word for word, which is really neat. The draw it will actually show you what the students drew. And so again, you'll see each student and their drawing. If you wanted to look at it in, in more detail, if you click on their drawing, it'll bring up this window to show you what they drew. You'll be able to read whatever they um, typed on top of the drawing, so on and so forth. And then the matching pairs, also really informative data, is you can see how many matches they completed and how many tries it took them to complete the activity. As just to see how students are doing with that vocab. If they're struggling, then they'll probably have you know, more, more tries over here. Did they actually complete the activity? So this is kind of what's included within the session report. Uh, now it depends on what activities are in each lesson. Um, so this lesson had quizzes, open-ended, draws, matching pairs, and a collaboration board. And so you're able to track all of the data and what your students are actually doing within each of those activities. Now, let's say that you're interested in keeping that data for report cards, for conferences, whatever that may be. You can download the data in either a PDF or a CSV. You could also share the data with your fellow teachers, principals, parents, whoever that might be. So I'm gonna now exit out of the session report and go back to my library. And the last thing that I would like to show you all is how to actually assign uh, a lesson through Nearpod. So if you hover over this lesson, you'll see that there's three options for assigning the lesson through Nearpod. You could do a live participation through Zoom, so the students can actually join in the Zoom session using the Nearpod code. You could do live participation, meaning you're teaching um, like through Zoom, live instruction, and students have the Nearpod open on the side and they're going through the slide deck as you're teaching, or there's student paste option. And so this would be for asynchronous learning. You wanted your students just to work through the lessons during the afternoon um, and listen to the audio, watch our videos, and kind of work through it at their own pace. You can also do that. So let's say I'm interested in assigning my class through the student paste option. So I'm going to click it. And you'll see this is the code that I mentioned at the very beginning of the video. This is what you're actually giving students to actually enter in the Nearpod session. So they can go to nearpod.com, really easy, student and parent friendly, just enter this in as a student and they'll be brought to the lesson. You're gonna wanna ensure that you have the required student submissions turned on. This way you're requiring all students work through the quiz and respond to the open-ended questions before moving on in the slide deck. One other thing to mention is you can actually edit the amount of time that you would like the students to complete the lesson. So let's say one of my students to complete it within a week, I can edit it on the calendar when this has to be completed by. The default is 29 days. Lastly, it's up to you on how you would like to share the lesson with your students. So if you're using Google Classroom, you can um, click on the Google Classroom and upload this directly into your Google Classroom, to your Microsoft Teams. If you're using something else and you just wanna embed a link, you can get a direct link to the session or if you wanted to send it out an email, you could also do that. And so once students have those links or it's embedded in the classroom, they can click on it and they'll be able to work through our SAM Labs lessons at their own pace using some Nearpod features. So this is a little overview of Nearpod and what the SAM Labs lesson adaptations look like within Nearpod. The last thing to mention is if you are using a free Nearpod account um, within when you download our lessons, as far as storage with that free account, you can use three of our lessons at a time. Um, and then let's say your students completed those three lessons, you can export that data and then delete the lessons and go back into our digital classroom and grab three more lessons into your free Nearpod account. Um, so that's just something to mention. If ever you have any questions about anything having to do with Nearpod, I recommend to reach out to Nearpod directly themselves. 
If you have questions about the Sam Labs lessons, the contents, anything having to do with our curriculum and our lessons, you can reach out to us in our live chat feature on our website. So I hope this helped you familiarize yourself with Nearpod and have fun.